three, two, one. Nick's handmade boots made me these indestructible boots. And as you can see, we've spent the last few months completely torturing these boots, putting them to the test to see if they really are indestructible boots. And you might be wondering why Nick's made me a pair of indestructible boots. Well, six months ago, I tested some self-proclaimed indestructible shoes that turned out to be not so indestructible. So after that shoe failed so miserably, I sent out the bat signal to the one company I thought was capable of actually making an indestructible boot, Nick's Handmade Boots. And if you don't know who Nick's Boots is, they're an American boot making company based out of Spokane, Washington, who are world renowned for making some of the highest quality, longest lasting, most durable work boots in the entire world. So the guys at Nick's accepted the challenge and went to work on a pair of indestructible boots to show what's possible when you take boot making to the ultimate degree and more importantly to prove that their team of skilled craftsmen are some of the best boot makers in the entire world. And I learned that firsthand when I tore apart one of their regular work boots layer by layer and it was literally the most exhausting video I've ever filmed in my entire life up into this video. So what makes this particular pair of boots more indestructible, more overbuilt than their regular boots or any other boot in the entire world? Well, it's made from eight ounce rough out chrome tanned leather that's literally twice as thick as most boots. The whole boot is stitched together with Technora Kevlar burn resistant thread built with a double midsole made from 14 ounce oak bark tan leather, some of the hardest leather in the world, and also has an eight iron rubber slip sole, making the midsole of this boot five times as thick as most boots. It's got a quadruple stitch toe cap covering the safety rated steel toe. It's got double lineman patches that double the thickness of the already over the top thick leather. The height of these are 18 and a half inches from the ground to the top of the boot with the fully gusted tongue and 32 solid brass pieces of hardware. The outsole is a fire rated Vibram outsole and to top it off they literally screw screws into the sole to help reinforce it. And each of these boots weigh a staggering 5 pounds each, making the pair weigh just over 10 pounds. Making this the most ridiculously overbuilt, over the top, steroid injected boot that I've ever seen and I think that's probably ever been made on US soil and probably the entire world. And like I said, this is a one-off boot that they made specifically for this video to show off the skills and the capabilities of their team. So they won't make this boot for you, but a lot of the features and the design and the durability of this boot is available in their regular line of boots. So be sure to check them out via the link in the description to thank them for taking on this challenge. And usually at this point in the video, we cut the boots and have to see how they're built and what makes them indestructible. But it felt like a shame to not run some super scientific tests on these boots. So we're gonna run three tests. We're gonna run an impact resistant test, the puncture resistant test, and my personal favorite, the flame resistance test. So up first is the impact resistance test to test the strength of the toe of this boot. And the way we're going to do that is a really simple test. We're going to stick an egg in the toe of a boot representing your toes and drop a 16 pound bowling ball from various heights representing the worst day work ever to see if the egg is going to crack and if your toes would be protected. Oh, <laughs> scrambled egg from the boot. So up first we dropped it from about five feet up. and really not a scratch. <laughs> so instead of doing the test a little bit higher, we just went straight to the top of the shop and dropped it from about 20 feet up. Three, two, one. Turns out dropping a 16 pound bowling ball from 20 feet up, trying to hit the toe of the boot is a little bit harder than expected. But after several tries, we finally got enough direct hits, pulled the egg out, and not a scratch. And I was actually really surprised by this test because I thought for sure that that steel toe would be dented, or at least the leather would split where the impact happened because it's a 16 pound bowling ball. So the results, Nick's indestructible boots passed the drop test, the impact resistance test with flying colors. Next is the puncture resistance test. We're gonna test how many pounds of pressure it takes to puncture through the sole of this boot. And I've done this test a couple times before with the duck boot series and the indestructible shoe video. And it's far from sophisticated and scientific, but it's super fun, if not a little dangerous. It was at this moment that he knew he up. 
But the basic idea is to suspend 145 pounds from an engine crane with a sharpened nail attached to the end of it so that when we slowly lower the weight, we can see how many pounds are taken off the scale, giving us the amount of weight it takes to puncture the sole of a boot. Easy. And to put it in perspective, the duck boots took six to 12 pounds to puncture through and the Timberlands took less than 20 pounds. So we set up the boot and slowly lowered the weight. And max it out right off the bat. And we thought that maybe we pierced all the way through. So I marked the nail, pulled the boot off. And as you can see, we didn't even get close to puncturing through. It still has at least two layers of that super thick oak bark tan leather. But I do have an idea of a test that we can do that will for sure puncture the sole. But uh, we have to wait to go down to my family farm to really put these to the test. And now for the final test, I wanted to test the burn resistance of this boot and more specifically the burn resistance of the Technora Kevlar thread. And this thread is pretty amazing stuff because Technora is eight times stronger than steel, nearly fireproof and is salt and chemical resistant. And if you've never heard of Kevlar, it's the stuff they make bulletproof vests out of. So to test the fire resistance of this thread, we hung four strands of different types of thread and lit them on fire. As you can see, the cotton thread just went up in flames. The poly spit bunch of flaming goo everywhere. The nylon was slightly slower, but the Technora was self-extinguishing. We had to light it multiple times and it took a lot of flame to actually get it to catch on fire. And even after it caught on fire, it still put itself out. So we thought we'd do a more real world test with a little garage science flamethrower. Don't do this at home. It's super dangerous. And uh, I don't want to be responsible for your house burning down. So pretty clearly this thread is super burn resistant and nearly fireproof. And just to put it into context, we also torched the Timberland that we've been running these tests on. And as you can see, those threads are completely gone. They just melted away, completely disintegrated from the flame. And we hit that Timberland way less than we hit the NYX indestructible boot for far less time. And even the, the, the leather is a lot less damaged. Like if you look at the leather on the NYX, because it's a flesh out leather, those looser fibers are a lot more fire resistant compared to that finer grain pattern that, that most of the time is exposed to the outside world. So that's something that I also didn't expect. I didn't expect the flesh out leather to be that fire resistant. So after the three tests, the boots were in pretty good shape and I wanted more carnage to the boot. So we put together one more test to really put these boots to the test. And after all that chaos and testing and destruction, these boots are still in pretty good shape. Hardly a scratch is on them. There's a couple nicks in the toe, but that's about it. Now it's time to cut these things in half, but before we do, I'm a little concerned that my bandsaw will not be able to cut through these. So um, we're gonna take it down to Nate's brother's dentistry practice to have him x-ray to see kind of what's inside of the boot and what to anticipate and even if my if my bank saw can even cut them, but also because it'd just be cool to x-ray this boot to see all the internal components of it. Sweet. Oh my gosh. This is so the craziest thing I've ever seen. So it's rendering right there. That is insane. So it shows part of why these 
boots are so indestructible because they literally have pieces of steel clenched over holding the layers together. And, and after looking at the x-rays, I don't think that my bandsaw can do the trick. It might, but I am afraid to burn out the bandsaw and the blade. But there is one thing that I know will do the trick, and that's 60,000 PSI of water. So we called in a quick favor down to the water jet channel who's just down the road from us and asked them to cut these in half to see what's inside of these boots and what makes them indestructible. too thick. So huge thanks to the Water Jet channel. Be sure to go check them out and subscribe to them. If you like my content, you'll love their content. They cut way more interesting things in half and they're always putting out amazing content. So huge thanks to them. Go check them out. I'll put a link in the description. But let's uh, see what's inside. and layers and, and work that went into making this boot and why it's so indestructible. There's literally an inch of leather between your foot and the ground. And I could spend, I could literally spend all day talking about all the different layers of this and going through why it's built and how it's built, but I think that deserves its own standalone video. So the next video is gonna be a layer by layer breakdown and analysis of this boot to really show off what makes this boot indestructible. I still wanna do one more test on these boots. So we're headed down to the family farm, to see how bulletproof these indestructible boots are. Okay, we're down in Mona the, on the family farm, the town I was raised in, and we're gonna put the boots to the test after all of our previous tests failed. So we've got a variety of guns from anywhere from 22 all the way up to 300 Ultra. So we're really gonna put the boots to the test with the help of my dad. As you can see, he's super happy about being out here on a cold, windy day. <laughs> so up first, the 22. And as you can see, yeah, it didn't thing. even get close to piercing through the sole. That bottom layer, but First I layer just bulged, bulged it out. Yeah, it might have just shocked it through. So, and I'm actually curious how many layers it goes through. So I think we'll get one more x-ray before this video is over. Next is the 17 HMR. Whoa, we're almost through on that one. It's very fragile. So once it gets in, it'll just Apart. Almost piercing all the way through the sole, but not quite. It stopped, I think, at the insole layer. Next up is the 204, and this time we're gonna target the steel toe and the sole of the boot, because I'm pretty sure it'll pierce through the sole, but I doubt it's gonna get through the steel toe. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Holy yeah. cow! Blew through there pretty easily, and it looks like I don't know if it did it go through the steel toe. Looks like it just pushed the steel toe up and it bounced out. Next up is the 223 or 223. It's one of the world's most popular calibers. And this time we're going to shoot through the arch stack because the arch literally has seven layers of leather. And I'm curious if it's going to pierce through all of them. Wow. Tiny little puncture hole. 
went through all, what's that? Five, six, seven layers. And then even blew through one way through the upper and all the way through the other side of the upper. And finally, just to really put this to the test, we're going completely overboard with a 300 Ultra Mag, shooting through the heel of the boot and trying to pierce through all 15 layers of steel, rubber, and leather to see if we can blow this boot apart. 300 Ultra, firing. It did blow out some there, but it's crazy how this rubber will take a bullet and just swell and come back. So finally, with a little help of some gunpowder, we finally blew through this boot, but I want to get it x-rayed one more time so we can see where the bullets ended up that didn't get pierced through, and just to get another cool x-ray of this boot. These x-rays are so insane. I love that you can see all the nails and how they went from being curled over to back to straight from the impact of the 300 Ultra. And you can see that the 22 slug is mostly stuck in between those two layers. And what's interesting is you can see all the shrapnel from the bullets exploding all throughout the entire boot. Um, this might be the coolest thing I've ever done on the channel is getting, is shooting this boot and then getting it x-rayed and I want to get this frame to put on the wall. So are these boots indestructible? Not really when you get to the point of shooting them with guns, but they are about as indestructible as you can get. So huge thanks to Nick's Handmade Boots for making this video possible. This is by far the most fun that I've ever had making a video. Nick's is one of the very last boot companies in the United States. Every single one of their boots is made by that, the same team of skilled craftsmen that made this boot. They pour their heart, their soul, and their sweat into every single boot that they make. And you're really, you're not even buying a pair of boots, you're, you're really buying a, a piece of art. But be sure to thank them by checking out their regular boots via the link in my description. And I am trying to convince them to make a more domesticated, toned down version of this boot for daily wear. So I'll also put a link in the description to sign up to get first dibs if we ever get to a point where I can convince them to make me a boot like this. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for the support of the channel. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because it just takes that little teeny click to make these videos possible. So thank you guys for everything and uh, I'll see you in the next video. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.